Well, good morning, friends. I am working on chopping this ham up so that I can use it in other meals. And I'm going to put it in my reusable Ziploc. And uh, we got a couple of, we got a few meals we're going to do today for the freezer. Most of them are for just mine. I think my daughter might get one, maybe two of them. But I am going to do meatloaf. And I'm also going to do, um, I got all those pork chops. And I'm going to do a rice and pork chop uh, bake for the freezer. So you won't have to bake it until later. Or you could bake it now. I am going to bake one of them off today. So you'll see that too. And uh, it'll be great. I like this ham. And I don't want it to, to go to waste. It's been sitting in the fridge for since Christmas. So, But um, it's still good. Ham lasts a long time. But it's kind of salty. I was really disappointed. So I'm going to use it for, I'm going to cut that fat off in it. And I'm going to use it for um, like scalloped potatoes and soups that, you know, there won't be so much salt in it that way. So that's what we'll use it for. But I'm just going to get this all cut up because this is part of my meal prep that's a big piece of fat. And uh, we'll get those other meals going. And then hopefully, we, we might have enough time to get in a third meal. Hello. Hello. Hello, friends. What did you do? Forget to give that to Tracy? Oh, that's the bones. Your bones. <laughs> Tracy gave me her, her turkey carcass, or yeah, her turkey carcass after Christmas, and, uh, or no, it wasn't her turkey carcass. She gave me a turkey to roast up, and uh, I was going to roast it up and debone it and keep the carcass for broth and use, and peel off the, the all the meat for her. So I did, and I got a big gallon-sized bag of bones, and I also got a gallon-sized bag of meat. Well, I gave her the bones instead of the meat. She's like, that bag you gave me was nothing but bones, lady. So my husband gave her the good one. All right. We're getting this. Okay. We got that done. We're going to give this to the chickens. Put this in the sink. Give this to the chickens and wash my hands. Okay, friends. Let me wipe this up and we'll seal that up. Then we can move on to the next. This is nice. I'll have it all cubed up in here. And then I can break it up easily. <clears throat> and use it for soups, scalloped potatoes, get all the air out of it. All kinds of stuff. All right. I don't have to label it because I can clearly see what's in there. So that's going to go back in the freezer. I want to use a little stir meat on my counter. Before I move on to the next. I love this stir meat. It's a good sanitizer. It's a restaurant grade and I get it at Am and on Amazon. I discovered it. Oh, a few years back. Works nice. All I know about it is it's a good sanitizer and it keeps killing germs even after you wipe it off. It's 
So that's a plus. Okay, I just got these washed. These are fresh mushrooms. Now I do got mushrooms freeze dried, but I want to use these up. For our pork chop rice dishes that we're going to do, um, we're going to make homemade mushroom soup. So I'll show you how that goes. These are like wild, I'm telling you. And I'm going to cut these real small. And then run my knife through them so they're really small pieces. I don't want big pieces of mushrooms in here. Nice and small. I just had like a half a pack of these left over from dinner last night. So, my dinner anyway. I had steak, so I sauteed up some mushrooms and onions with it. It was divine. Okay, I got you up here close. We're going to do, and my head's cut off, so you're going to see a headless Renee. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to do six tablespoons of butter. Turn your burner on. And you want to get this melted before you put the mushrooms in there. Okay. All right. We're going to let that melt. All right, so our butter is almost melted. So we're gonna put in our mushrooms right on in there. Okay, beautiful. We're gonna mix this around real quick. We're also gonna add a little salt to it. And that'll bring out the water in those mushrooms because we do want it to, we don't want it to be juicy. We want these mushrooms to be cooked down. Can you see that? Let me bring you over here. So we're just going to let that cook. Let that cook down a little bit. And while that's cooking down, we're going to go ahead, we're going to get our rice ready. And these were my Sam's order. This is my rice, and I'll show you what else I ordered. Uh, those are cooking. We'll get them open. This is my big 25-pound bag of jasmine rice. Oh, my goodness. You'll see that in a second. Then I got this one I got to open. This is my hash browns that I ordered from them. They have these on Amazon for $21 a box for these hash browns. And I got them through Sam's because I use them all the time. I don't do my own. It just, it just takes too much. And for the price I paid for these are $7.88 a box through Sam's. That is a big, big Huge difference. There we go. These. These are the spuds I was telling you about. That's what I get from Sam for $7.88 a box. They have these exact boxes through Amazon, $21 a box. That, friends, is just crazy. Absolutely. I'm going to mix these up a little bit. I want them to cook down even more. Beautiful. They're looking good. 
This is a complete scratch made meal. But these will go down in the root cellar. Now here's my big 25 pound bag of rice. Oh my goodness. Look at how that is. I'm gonna have to repackage that in my Ziploc bags. Can you open this? It's got like a double seam on it. Okay, you can see that that's pretty much cooked out and the butter is left. And it's a beautiful, those mushrooms are beautiful browned. Gorgeous. Okay. We are going to add our flour to this. Six tablespoons of flour, just like... butter. Equal amounts. Now we're going to mix this around because we want this butter to cook. Or the flour to cook. We want the flour taste to cook out of it. See that? Looking good. Let that cook out of there a little bit. When we get this cooked down a little bit, it's doing beautiful. I think it's ready. Gorgeous color. We're going to take one cup of broth, chicken broth. We're going to pour it right in there. Mix it just a little bit. See how thick that gets? And then we're going to do one cup of milk. Okay. Now you want that, it'll thin out a little bit. This is homemade cream of mushroom soup, Papa. Your favorite. <laughs> Keep mixing it. Mix, mix, mix. Turn that heat off. And just keep mixing it. Oh, don't make a mess like I just did. This is beautiful. And if you got it a little too thick, if you want it thinned down a little, you can thin it down. I think I'm going to just a little bit. And I'm going to use my whisk. There we go. Perfect. That's homemade, scratch made, cream of mushroom soup. We're going to put just a little bit of pepper in this because we love pepper. We don't need salt in there. The mushrooms were already salted. So there we go. We can set this aside and this will be ready for our pork chop mixture. Okay, friends, we've got our cream of chicken done. I showed you how to do the cream of mushroom. Now, we're going to set that aside there because we're going to use that. Now, this recipe also calls for onion soup mix. You want to save money, you make your own, okay? And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you this. This is simple. Well, I'm just going to use all these onions because there's about a cup left in there. I told you i got to dehydrate or freeze dry. I more onions. Now, these are freeze dried, so I'm just going to crunch these up just to make them into, like, flakes. Looks perfect. They crumble real easy. If you don't be careful, there'll be a powder after you freeze dry in there. All right, so we've got that. Now we're going to do, let's see, our beef bouillon. My recipe calls for one half cup. I need to dry this out a little better so it don't stick in there. Okay. We're going to do one half cup of this beef, powder, beef bouillon powder. 
Well, that would be one cup. No, that's, that's, that was a little more than a half cup. Let's pull some of this out. Okay, that's good. That happens. That's real life. Ah. All right, now we're going to put in a tablespoon of parsley because I am doing a double batch. There's a tablespoon of parsley. We're going to also do, we got celery seed. We're going to do a half teaspoon of celery seed. We're going to do a half teaspoon of paprika in here. Okay. And we're also going to do a half teaspoon of pepper. And that's all there is to it. That's how easy it is to make your own. We're going to get a little... I'll just take this one. And we're going to mix this all up. See that in there? Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. I want my boyan to be a nice powder. That mixes up beautifully. And there is your onion soup mix. And I need two of those, or one of these, for two of my meals. So I can divide this between the two. All right, so let's get busy. Okay, <laughs> that's in my face. First, I'm going to spray my pans here. I'm just going to give them a quick spray. I got two 9 by 13 pans. All right, those are sprayed. A cup. We're going to do a cup and a half in each one. My husband, oh, that's perfect. And my husband will come and move this. I'll set it down here for now. I'll have to repackage that. We get the packs. Spread that around. Okay. So that recipe is right here, and I will put this recipe in the description box. So it's a cup and a half in each. Um, we're going to lay our pork chops down in there first. Now you can use the boneless pork chops. Absolutely, but I'm using the bone in. So we're just going to... Lay these down so they fit nicely. Let's see. Lay it that way. And then we'll lay one. These are beautiful. Then we'll lay one this way. There we go. They're in there. And we got this one up here. And I got another package yet. And what I don't use in these, I'm just going to package up and I'm going to... Uh, those are thick. What I don't use, <clears throat> I'm gonna going to um, vacuum seal and put in. I wonder if I can get one more in there for my daughter's family. I probably could. I'll get this one in there. All right, that's gonna be good. We'll use that for hers, and for that matter, I might as well do my best to get. This in here somehow. All right, there we go. That way we used them all. You can use as many or as little as you want. Doesn't matter. Get my hands washed. 
Okay, now that we have the pork chops in there, we're going to use all our seasonings. We're going to mix this in with our soup. Okay, so we're going to use a teaspoon of granulated garlic in this one. Actually, I'm going to get this one out too. That's our cream of mushroom there and our cream of chicken in the pan. Teaspoon of that. And I'm going to do the salt and pepper on them. So we're going to divide this evenly between the two. And we're going to give this a good mix. And this is wonderful. Nothing like scratch made. Make everything homemade as, as much as you can. Okay, we're going to mix this a little more. I'm going to put the mushroom one on that end. So I, I'm going to pour this all on here. Beautiful. Spread that all around. Then we're going to let that cool. Now we're going to mix up this one real good. And if you use canned cream of mushroom soup and packaged onion soup mix, by all means, go right ahead. Just mix them together and toss them over the top. I just think it tastes so much better with the homemade. And sometimes I use the canned. I do got canned in my pantry stock, just in case. All right, we've got that mixed up pretty good. And that is the mushroom soup mix. That's going to go on here. Okay, beautiful. And that parsley in there is beautiful too. Okay, so now, these are nice. We're going to put our pepper on them. And of course, my family loves pepper, so it doesn't matter that there's quite a bit here. Put a little bit of salt on this. And we're going to let them sit right there until that soup completely cools. And then we'll package them and they'll be ready for the freezer. Or you can bake, you can bake one right now. You can cover it with foil, put it in the oven, uh, 375 degrees for about 45 minutes or so. And it'll be lovely. And we might just bake one of these off. We'll see what Mr. Wayne says. If he wants one, we'll bake one so you can see how well they turn out. All right, I'm going to get all my stuff put away before we move on to the next. Okay, friends, so these are done. And they're cooled and they're ready to go in the freezer. However, the cream of chicken one that I made... Mr. Wayne wants me to make that for them. So the leftovers of that will go in the freezer. Let's get this wrapped up. I'm going to set aside because this one is just going to get covered up because this one's going to cook. Thaw before baking. Because that one's going to my daughter. All right, now I'm going to also wrap this one in plastic. Now 
That's perfect. All right. Okay. Wrapped up beautifully. All right, that's all right. That one's going to go in the freezer. The other one's going to go out in the, my walk-in cooler until I'm ready to bake it this evening. It's not even noon right now. I can't bake that yet. And then I'm going to come back when I get this all put away, and we're going to do some meatloaf for the for the uh, freezer. I've got all the burger that I bought. Um, I got some of it. I found a good sale there at Meyer. I usually buy burger from my local butcher, but that was a, a good sale and it was um, 90 10. So we're going to use that and I'm going to make some make ahead meatloaf. So we'll see you in a minute. I told you my kitchen was real life, right? And I'm not perfect. <laughs> I put these together, friends, and I forgot the broth. It needs six cups of beef broth. So I already told my daughter she's got to pick this up. I told her what I did, and she said she'll just add the broth into hers when she cooks it, that way, you know, I don't have to open all this up again. Otherwise, I would just open it up and add it to it. This one, because we're cooking this for dinner, I'm not gonna add it to it right now. I'll just throw it in there when I put it in the oven. Um, I can't believe I did that, but that's life. Anyway, I will put the re a recipe in my description box. I will include the, the beef broth in that per pan. So don't forget that part, <laughs> like I did. Anyway, all right, we will see you when we do the meatloaf. Okay, friends, <laughs> I got the big daddy bowl out and we are ready to put together our meatloaf. Now I've got three, six, I've got seven pounds of burger. So we're gonna put that, put in. Our bowl. Let me start with this one. This one is a pound of ground turkey. Only because I want to use this. Because there's no other use for it right now. And I got it the other day on a on a sale. Uh, 40% or 40, 40 cents off in it. So I grabbed it. I thought, you know, my family doesn't really care for ground turkey, but if it's mixed in burger, they don't complain. So I'm just going to mix it right in with the hamburger and get that used up. I love having meatloafs meatloaves in the refrigerator or the freezer. I love having meatloaf in the freezer. Okay, so we got all that. Now I'm gonna take my rings off because the best way to mix these is with your hands. All right, so over here, I always use, um, you can use breadcrumbs if you want. This is, a recipe that I've used for years. I always use like stovetop stuffing or off-brand stuffing because it's got all the seasonings in it as well and I love it. And it's just as quick and easy. Now I do have my own Italian breadcrumbs that I make. But I get this stuffing mix purposely for my meatloaf. Love it. I've got three of them in there. I don't know if I'll need another one. I got a fourth one out just in case. And let's see, what do I got over here? Wait. These are my freeze-dried scallions. These are wonderful. And I'm going to put some of these in here. You could use regular onions. I'm going to use my scallions or dehydrated, whichever you want. I 
going to use the scallions though. I'm also going to put in about a good tablespoon because there's between there's between seven and eight pounds of meat in here. So I want to make sure I have enough garlic in there. I'm also going to put a nice bunch of pepper in there. A little more. There we go. I'm going to put salt in here. There we go. Not a whole lot of salt because there is salt in that um, stuffing mix. All right, so we're going to do eggs. And I need a dish to put my eggshells in. Oh, I'll just put them in the sink like I always do. Two. I might need about six eggs because there's a lot here. One, two, three, four. I lose count. Ha! I get to yakking and I lose count. There's five. And there's six. All right. Not the shell. Okay. So with that, let me rinse my hands off. Then we're going to get ketchup in here. I'm going to put about two to three cups of ketchup in there. Let's see. I think that's probably all that I have. And I bet it is. Yeah. There's not much more of that left in there. but I do save my container. Let me grab another one. Okay. Okay, there's two cups there. Scrape that out of there. So now, got everything in there. Well, let's get our hands in there and get mixing. Okay, we'll get right in here and get this all mixed up. I almost need a stool to stand on. I'm going to put one more bag of my stuff in here. Yeah, there we go. Now I'll get that mixed up. All right, I think we got that mixed up good. And that's what it needed was one more. All right, I'm going to wash my hands. And we'll get this all bagged up and ready for the freezer. Okay, friends. Somebody sent me a Christmas present. The parchment paper sheets. There's 200 sheets in this box. I don't know who sent this, but my goodness, thank you from the bottom of my heart. What a lovely gift to get. This was just wonderful. All pre-cut. How gorgeous is that? And it fits my sheets beautifully. So we're going to use these because we're going to freeze these um, meat loaves on these. That way I can get them in the oven. I love that. I don't know who sent that, but oh my goodness, I could just hug you. 
all my goodies I've gotten. You know, so many people have sent me cards and and gifts, and I just am I'm just beside myself because I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. I love everything that has been sent to me, and I thank everybody. All right. We're going to have quite a few of these. So because it's just my husband and I, I'm going to make ours a little bit smaller, but I'm also going to shape it into like oval, you know. And I'm going to put my dip in there because I like to put a little bit of barbecue sauce or maybe some more ketchup in there. So I always make that little lip, okay? We're gonna do two of them on this tray. Maybe we could get three on this tray. I don't know. I think I need a little more than that. Real nice. Okay. And I like my little lip on there, so I have a little reservoir for a little added ketchup. Okay. There's two of them on there. I bet we could get three of them. I bet we could. Let's turn that one sideways. We'll get another one on. These are going to be perfect. Let's move this one over this way a little more. There we go. Now we'll get them. Now we're cooking. Okay. I don't want them touching because I don't want them to stick together. Okay. These are going to flash freeze. And then I will package them. I, once they're frozen, I, flash freeze, no, I'm going to freeze these solid. And then when they're froze solid, I am going to turn around and I'm going to uh, vacuum seal them in my vacuum sealed bags. And that way they last for a long time in the freezer. Not that they're going to last that long, but they will last a long time. You know what? I think I'm going to make two of these for my daughter anyway. And I know they're going to be a little smaller, but that's all right. I'm going to make her two of them. For her freezer. Oh. Does she like this too? Or she could put it in her slow cooker too. You could cook this in your slow cooker. That's quite a bit. That'll feed her family. Might not have leftovers, but it'll definitely feed the family. I'm telling you, my family eats like government mules. Okay, so here's our last one. We're going to shape this beautifully. They're all about the same size. There. And she's got a little reservoir in hers for some meat or some ketchup or barbecue sauce, whichever she wants. So these are going to go in the freezer. I got room in my freezers for both of these. And when those are frozen, aren't those beautiful? I got five beautiful ones out of there. Okay, these are gonna go in the freezer just like this. I'm gonna let them freeze till they're pretty solid. 
and then I'm going to repackage them and I'm going to um, vacuum seal them. And that way they'll last almost indefinitely in your freezer. As long, the USDA says as long as it's, it's vacuum sealed with, with no air in it, your meat can last a long time in your freezer, almost indefinite. You know, as long as it doesn't get air in it, because then it can get freezer burnt, which freezer burnt isn't unsafe to eat. It's just not very appealing because it's dry. So I'm going to definitely vacuum seal these for my freezer. I'm going to vacuum seal two of them for my daughter's freezer. Um, I have got the two packages uh, or the two pans of pork chops and rice casserole. I showed you how to do the mushroom, the homemade mushroom soup, the homemade um, onion soup mix. I showed you a couple things today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, friends, that's it for today. I'm going to go put these in the freezer, clean up my mess, sit down, and relax because I did enough today. I did what I needed to get done. I brought you along with me, and I'm glad you hung out in the kitchen with me. And I hope that when you make any of these um, freezer meals, first off, I hope you don't forget the broth like I did, and I'm sorry about that. That did get added to it. Um, secondly, I hope when you make these freezer meals that you, you know, opt to make the homemade cream of mushroom and cream of chicken soup and also your homemade um, onion soup mix. And you can even, you know, scale up that recipe and make a nice amount to store in your pantry because it stores very well. So with that being said, friends, you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.